Good evening, God's people. I'm going to share out of uh, Psalms 139, starting in verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. It was a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I chose this scripture. It was a couple of weeks ago, and I was outside with Brother uh, uh, Juan. And um, we just, you know, learned about his wife's brother. And uh, it was a Wednesday, and I, I, was, I wasn't expecting him. To, to be out there, you know, to usher. I just wasn't, I was just prepared to be out there. And then he came, and um, I had told him that. I says, hey, brother, you know, it's good to see you. I didn't think you were going to come. And he said that to me. He goes, brother, where am I going to go? Where else am I going to be? He goes, am I going to seek comfort among non-believers? Because I want to be in the house of the Lord. And it made me cry. And I gave him a big hug, and I felt a little embarrassed. And I'm like, there's brethren that are, going through, have gone through real, real pain, affliction. And this is where they want to be. This is where they seek comfort. Um, our, our, our leaders, our elders, are examples of that. They're, they're here. They're, they're, whatever they're going through, whatever they're dealing with, it's the, the house of the Lord. It's with the brethren. It's where they want to be. It's, this, is, this is their shelter. This is their comfort. So praise God. Um, we've come tonight. We, we lay down our burdens at his feet. Remember our pastor, he's at, uh, they're out in the way, uh, even as Brother Daniel was saying, that much deserved and needed vacation. So we, we remember uh, our pastor, Sister Susan. But uh, let, it, let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we just uh, come into your house, Lord. We come in with our hearts, Lord. Um, heavy, Lord, burdened, tired, weary. Lord, but you are our rest, Lord. You are our strength, Lord. So, Father God, uh, be with us this evening, Lord. Touch those that need a touch. Through affliction, Lord, through pain, through sorrow, Lord. Um, you touch, Lord, according to every need tonight. Lord, have your way in your hearts of your people tonight, Lord, Father God. And just thank you. Thank you that we can come here. That we can come here and seek you, Lord, and find you. So thank you, Lord. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Standing here in your presence. Things you have done, waiting here patiently, just to hear your still small voice again. Holy, righteous, faithful till the end. Savior, healer, redeemer, and friend. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are, Jesus. Standing here in your presence, thinking of the good things you have done, waiting here patiently just to hear your still small voice again.
Father, we just thank you for this evening, the opportunity to gather, Lord, just to, to receive your bread of life, Lord, and I would just desire and pray that you have your way with this meeting, with those hearts that are gathered here, and Lord, we just place this meeting in your hands, and we just give you thanks and praise in your awesome and holy name we pray, amen, amen. Go ahead and greet those around you.
Good evening. Praise the Lord. Before I call Brother Daniel forward, he's going to share the message tonight. Uh, just uh, like to pray for some uh, families, and uh, then I'll be calling Brother Daniel. And uh, some of us uh, know uh, Brother Noni. His name is Arnold. His wife went to be with the Lord. And uh, so I want to pray for him and his family. They're related to Brother Daniel and Annie. And uh, so we just want to pray for Brother. I remember um, Brother Arnold goes back uh, many years. He used to have a, a barber shop here in Ontario of uh, Six and uh, Grove. And I, I've not, I, I didn't know the gentleman. And, uh, but I had heard his name uh, uh, in the fellowship. And uh, my, my son, uh, they had a convention up in uh, New York that year. And I took my son to uh, get his haircut. And I remember uh, I, I took him to the barbershop, Noni. And I, I didn't know the gentleman. I didn't know he was a Christian man. I was a baby Christian. And, and anyway, we got into a conversation. And I remember he blessed my, my son with a haircut and, and some other things. And uh, then we started talking. And then he started mentioning everybody from Cucamonga. I said, oh, my gosh. <laughs> he mentioned Daniel and Andy and, and down the line. And later I met, met his wife and uh, the family, and uh, so we became good brethren in the Lord and then as, and friends. So tonight we just wanna lift them up prayer, lift up so, let, let we want to lift them up in prayer, lift up Brother Noni. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you for this evening. Thank you for <clears throat> brothers uh, leading us in worship tonight, Father. Even as we're in God's presence tonight, Father, it's good together. Even as that song we sang that is, there, uh, there's an, another place that would rather be among our brethren, our sisters, and your presence, oh God. And uh, this evening, Lord, I just want to pray for my brother Noni, Lord, brother Arno, Lord. You comfort him, the family, the grandkids, Lord, the family members. You comfort our brother, Lord, and, and others that are, 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 are suffering, Lord. You comfort them as only you know how to comfort the families, Father. And I pray this uh, also, Lord, for um, uh, riches as he's uh, sick and afflicted. You, you touch our brother, Lord. Give him rest and uh, be with him, Lord. And, uh, and again, we thank you for, for being here this evening, Lord. And I lift up Brother Daniel. as uh, He shared a good message last night, and I'm sure he's, we have something good for us tonight. Thank you for Brother Daniel. Thank you for every one of, uh, of us here and also those that are at home. You bless them, Lord. And you have your way this evening, as you already have. And uh, we're going to receive something good from you because we never, never gather in vain. We don't look at numbers, but we look at you, Lord, because we come seeking your face. And when we come seeking your face, Father God, you will bless your people. And you will bless your people tonight. So have your way tonight, Lord. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So tonight, there's no announcements until Sunday. <laughs> I don't want to announce something that's, <laughs> that is going to mess up everything. So Sunday, we'll continue with the announcements. So this time, we're going to call Brother Daniel. Praise the Lord. Good evening, God's people. I have one announcement. The Lord is coming soon. <laughs> yes, he is. Amen. We can always announce that and know that that's true. So praise God. Just uh, want to thank you for coming tonight. And those of you online listening, uh, I pray that God's word will just uh, bless this evening and uh, in our lives and even as believers. And the title I gave uh, tonight's message was uh, to forgive or not to forgive. That is a question. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> to be or not to be, that is a question. Shakespeare. I don't know Shakespeare, but I saw that somewhere. <laughs> anyway, um, like Brother Louis said, I shared uh, last night with a man, and uh, one of the things I shared, or what I shared, was about waiting. 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 Uh, on the Lord. And that's good because there's blessings 
when we wait upon the Lord. But it's not always good to wait for everything. And one of those things is forgiveness. We shouldn't wait to forgive or to be forgiven. That's one thing that the Bible speaks about. And uh, forgiveness can be, uh, bless you. Forgiveness can be a very heavy thing, uh, not only to think about, but to do. You know, when we think about either forgiving somebody or asking somebody to forgive me or you, whether you are the forgiver or the forgivee, you know, because that's such a word. In other words, you might be asking uh, for forgiveness or someone may have uh, hurt you in some way, and you're asking to forgive them. So, like I said, forgiveness is not always an easy thing. Um, sometimes it brings nervousness, anxiety, uh, especially when it's something that you know that has to be done. And uh, it's just um, you're fearful that maybe the other party will reject your request for forgiveness. I think that's one of the fears that we have. And uh, what happens is that... Uh, this goes on and on. You know, there's um, many relationships that are strained because of unforgiveness. You know, there really is. And uh, sometimes for many, many years, even amongst family members, unforgiveness that people don't speak to one another. Uh, and maybe even for insignificant or trivial things, maybe things we may have even forgotten, but that unforgiveness is there. And uh, maybe, or maybe it's some deep hurts that it's hard to forgive or to be forgiven. But the Word of God speaks about uh, forgiveness and something that um, we need to do. Uh, because, you know, uh, forgiveness can be a powerful healing in our lives, uh, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. You know, when you have things in your life that, or when I have things in my life, that we know we need to do is like a burden, and it it, uh, it affects us. It might be anxiety. It might be a, an affliction. Or spiritually, we're down because there's something that needs to be done, and it affects us. It really does. Until we get that out of the way, until we settle it, then there is just such a relief when there is forgiveness. There is such a relief in our lives. You know, because studies have shown that uh, forgiveness does heal. It heals physically, emotionally, and even spiritually. And uh, sometimes our afflictions are caused by things that we carry in our lives, whether it's worry, anxiety, or things that need to be done that we haven't done. And uh, unforgiveness is one of those things, I believe, that uh, brings us down. And, of course, the Bible speaks about forgiveness because it's so very important in our lives. You know, the word forgiveness is uh, shown 15 times in the Bible, forgive 121 times. I didn't, I didn't count them, I, I looked it up. But um, the Bible also tells us that we should forgive someone 490 times, the Bible says, in the Word of God. That's a lot. So you see how important it is that the Lord speaks about forgiveness. And um, before I get to the message, I'd like to read a few scriptures on uh, pertaining to forgiveness. In Matthew 6, 14 and 15, that's the Lord's Prayer. The Word says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Matthew 18, 21 and 22. And Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times, he was asking. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. In other words, on and on forgive. You know, we don't have to count the times that we forgive. I have to forgive you again. You're going to do it again anyway. No. As long as we forgive. You know, the, the, um, I was looking at my wife and she, I have to ask her for forgiveness a lot of times. 
<laughs> in any in any case, so forgiving is just we don't count. It's just done. We forgive, yes, because it's truly something that we have in our hearts, in our lives that we want to forgive. In Colossians three verses twelve and thirteen. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Even if there's a complaint or hurt, something that happened, Forgiveness heals and does a lot of things. You know, there's um, a few other scriptures um, in regarding to um, forgiveness. And I'm just going to go over those real quickly. I wrote them down here somewhere. Oh, here it is. It says in... Um, well, in Matthew 18, 21 to 35, it speaks about the unforgiving servant. In Colossians 3, 12 and 13, we just read. Map to Pinecrest. Um... Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another. Luke 6.14, forgive and you will be forgiven. Psalms 86.5, you, Lord, are forgiving and good. Mark 11.25, forgive so that your Father forgives you. Psalm 32.1, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he will forgive us. Proverbs, Proverbs 17, 9, fault forgiven, dwell, dwell on it, dwelling on it separates close friends. So don't dwell on the faults, is what the word is telling us. And then um, Luke seven forty seven, the woman who washed the feet of Jesus, and she was forgiven. And then uh, we know this one, Psalm 103, 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And like I said at the beginning, there's a lot of scriptures speaking about forgiveness. And um, we find verses about healing, restoration, peace that can be found in forgiveness. So many things that we can apply into our lives that makes us stronger believers, uh, not only to in our own walk, but in our effect on others. We can encourage other people also. We can encourage our brethren because we have that freedom knowing that we have forgiven. Uh, so forgiving is really an act of love. It's not something that you have to do. You know, oh God, I've got to forgive. It's an act of love. You want to forgive because you love and you want to settle those things in your hearts and in the hearts of others. Not wanting to take revenge because we've been hurt. That's one of the reactions that um, Man has, you know, something happens and we want to right away get revenge. That's not forgiving. That's wanting to get back at someone or somebody for, some, for a hurt. And, uh, you know, Jesus set that example of love and forgiveness even to his enemies, those who crucified him. What did he say when he was on the cross in Luke 23, 34? Then Jesus said, Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Even those who crucified him, and he was going through all that pain and suffering, he could say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Such love from our Savior. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we can't greet a brother or a sister because, uh, and we get upset because they didn't greet us. Or they didn't invite us to an event, so we hang on to those things. They're little things, but still things that bring a division unnecessarily. Instead of just letting those things go by. And uh, forgiveness is so, so important. And sometimes it's like I said, it's carrying on for years to years to years to years. 
and sometimes we don't get that opportunity to say, forgive me. You know, it's too late. That's why, like I shared with the man yesterday, waiting is good, but we don't have to wait on everything. And asking for forgiveness is something that we shouldn't wait. Praise God. We see a, a good example in Genesis 25 uh, to Genesis 33. Now, we all know this account of uh, Jacob and Esau, right? And um, how, uh, if we go to um, Genesis We'll go through 25, Genesis 25, 21. This is Isaac pleading with the Lord for his wife because she was barren, Rebecca. It says, Genesis 25, 21. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. But the children, it doesn't say the child, But the children struggled together within her. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? So she went in to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. And the older shall serve the younger. This is prophetic. So when the days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over, so they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of his of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man, dwelling in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game or the food that he hunted. But Rebecca loved Jacob. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, as we come before you, we want your word to minister to us, Lord. You are so good to us. You have forgiven us of our trespasses. He has set us right before you, Lord, all because of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, who sacrificed on the cross, was crucified, for all of us, for all who believe. So, Lord, tonight we put this meeting in your hands that you have your way in Jesus' name. Praise God. So it goes on to say uh, that uh, Jacob was making a stew, and Esau came from the field hunting, and apparently he didn't have a, a good day because he didn't bring anything in from hunting. It says he was a skillful hunter, but not that day. In any case, so he smelled the food, and he asked uh, Jacob to give him some of that food. Uh, Jacob, of course, said that's fine. It says in verse 29 of um, Genesis 25, now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same Red stew, for I am weary, therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die, so what is this birthright to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. So Esau sold his birthright for a morsel of food, you know, a stew. And um, because Esau was a firstborn, he had the right of the blessing as a firstborn of um, Rebecca and Isaac. So um, we, we see later that uh, Esau was sorry what he had done about his birthright. You know, he he did it at a time when he was weak. How many times people do things because of weakness? You know, and uh, instead of trusting in God, that God will see them through. But he did that. And in Genesis um, chapter 27, it tells us that um, Isaac, 
their father was old and could not see. So Jacob's mother plotted to deceive Isaac into blessing Jacob instead of Esau because Jacob was the second born. So we read how um, Esau was born, you know, hairy arms, he was red, and, and he was a hunter. So Rebecca, she put uh, animal skins on uh, Jacob, put uh, Esau's clothes on him. So he, he went near Isaac, his father, who really couldn't see at his age. And he asked him several times who he was. And uh, Jacob kept saying he was Esau. So Isaac blessed him. He gave him the blessing of the, of the firstborn. And uh, instead of to Esau, who was the firstborn. And uh, if you go to Genesis twenty-seven thirty. It says, Now it happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may, may bless me. See, Jacob had already taken food to Isaac, the food that he had made. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? He was confused because he had already blessed he thought Esau, who was really Jacob. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who, where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it be before you came, and I have blessed him, and indeed he shall be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me also, O my father. Can you imagine? He was expecting the... Uh, Blessing, he was shocked, he was crying. He was crying out, and bitterly it says. And Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. He didn't really take it, in a sense, but he sold it, his birthright. And now, look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, Have you not reserved the blessing for me? And uh, Isaac blessed him. He blessed uh, Esau, praise God. So from that day forward, Esau hated Jacob because of what had happened. If we turn to 2741, it says, uh, Genesis 2741. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand, then I will kill my brother Jacob. In other words, once our father Isaac dies, I'm going to get him because of what he did to me. There was so much hate and anger and bitterness in Esau's heart towards Jacob. And their mother, Rebekah, heard him. So what she did is she sent Jacob to live with her brother Laban in the land far away in Haran. And to get him away from Esau because Esau was ready to kill him. You know, there was a, a lot of uh, hate between them or as, as far as uh, Esau was concerned. So he fled to uh, live with, with Laban. And uh, he was there for uh, 20 years. And during that time, Jacob went to work for Laban, his would have been his uncle. And um, he saw... Um, Laban's daughters. He wanted to marry uh, uh, Rachel. And um, Laban promised him that. But when the time came that uh, Jacob had completed the years for his wife, Laban gave him Leah, the younger one. And then so he, he told uh, Jacob he had to work more, I think it was 10 more years, or so he could marry Rachel. And he finally did. And then if we go to uh, chapter 31, in this, in this account, we see that uh, Jacob finally got away from Laban. He fled from his uncle, and he took his servants, his people, all his livestock and everything, and he fled. And when Laban found out, he went, ran after. He chased after uh, Jacob, 
And when he caught him, he told him, why did you do this? Why did you leave without telling me? And so forth. Anyway, they um, settled their differences. And Jacob went on. Praise God. So in uh, Genesis 31, or 32, verse 3, we see that um, Esau knew, I mean, Jacob knew that Esau was not far away. He had it in his heart that things need to be made right. And uh, it says, um, it says in verse 3 of um, Genesis 32, Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. He wanted to send his messengers to see what the situation was with Esau, to make things right before they would meet because there was still unforgiveness. Praise God. So he sent the messengers. And in verse 6, we read that, Then the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he also is coming to meet you. Was it? That was a great thing. And 400 men are with him. <laughs> when Jacob heard that, he said, Oh, my God, he's going to kill me. 400 men. You know, yeah, he's coming, all right, with his army, you know. Uh, so Jake was really afraid in verse 7 and distressed. He divided the people that were with him into two companies. He said if Esau attacks one company, at least the other half can escape. Because Jacob had in his mind that Esau was going to get revenge. He was going to get back at him. Praise God. Then Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. See, the Lord had already promised Jacob he was going to bless him. But Jacob wasn't thinking about that. He, um, he was really worried. So the, the news that was brought to Jacob uh, ended up splitting the people and brought fear upon uh, Jacob. He was anxious, worried, and not feeling very well because he wasn't expecting uh, things to turn out good. Praise God. Uh, so he was nervous and anxious and just uh, not knowing exactly what to do other than he still had to go forward, but he was going to split his people. He still wanted to meet with him. So what Jacob did, he sent gifts through his messengers in uh, Genesis twenty-seven forty-one. Actually, it's 32, 14, and 18. 27, 41 is Jacob remembering the last things that Esau had said. The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. That's what Jacob was thinking. I remember what he said. As soon as our father dies, he's going to kill me. So in any case, he wanted to send um, gifts to Esau in Genesis 32, 14. It says, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milk camels with their colts, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, and 10 fowls. Then he delivered them to the hand of his servants, every drove by itself, and said to his servants, pass over before me and put some distance between successive droves. And he commanded the first one, saying, when Esau, my brother, meets you, and ask you, saying, To whom do you belong, and where are you going? Whose are these in front of you? Then you shall say, They are your servant Jacob's. It is a present sent to my Lord Esau, and behold, he also is behind us. Praise God. So Jacob wanted to make amends. And then uh, chapter 33 is when they finally... Uh, Find him meet. And uh, we know that before that happened, Jacob had wrestled with the Lord. And it was at that time that uh, the Lord changed his name from Jacob to Israel, you know, the nation of Israel. Praise God. So in Genesis 33, verses 3 and 4. We'll start from verse, verse 1 of uh, Genesis 33. 
Now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were 400 men. And then we see how he divided the the people. And um, it says in verse 8, Then Esau said, What do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, There are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Esau didn't want to take the gifts to Jacob because he had enough. And Jacob said, No, please, if I have now find favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand as much as I have seen your face as though I had seen the face of God and you were pleased with me. Um, if we go back to Genesis 33, verse 3, this is when they first met. In Genesis 33, 3, then he crossed over before them and bowed himself, this speaking about Jacob, bowed himself to the ground seven times till he came near to his brother. You can picture Jacob, such fear, worry, anxiety, that he bowed himself as he was going forward to meet Esau. He bowed himself seven times. I'm going to humble myself before my brother to see that I'm sincere. So what did Esau do? He did the unexpected. In verse 4, but Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted his eyes and saw the woman children. That he asked whose they were. Jacob wasn't expecting that, that Esau would forgive him and crying together, embracing, kissing him, and they wept together. That's what forgiveness does. It took 20-some years for that to happen because of Jacob's fear. But when they did, Esau's heart had melted towards his brother. And um, But um, what happened was that um, Esau wanted to combine with Jacob, but Jacob had other plans. So they ended up each going their own way. Jacob went one way. Esau the other. Praise God. So, um, but, you know, in, in verse 10, you see the reaction of uh, Jacob when he, when he was embraced by Esau. It says, towards the last part of verse 10, I have seen your face as though I had seen the face of God, and you were pleased with me. How relieved Jacob was. Brother, it's as if I have seen the Lord himself because you have forgiven me. What uh, burden was lifted off of Jacob? You know, when there's forgiveness, when we forgive or are forgiven, there's so much that is lifted off of our lives, things that we couldn't sleep because thinking about those things. We feel a, a freedom. Now I can really step forward and serve the Lord, and I don't have this burden on me about forgiving or unforgiving. You know, that's the way... Um, Jacob felt that uh, although he had all that fear, there was a uh, burden lifted up, a relief and peace in his life. Praise God. So again, there was forgiveness, but there was no relief. Reconciliation. When there's forgiveness, there needs to be also reconciliation. You know, a setting aside of things renewing that friendship and that love. You know, there's another account. It's not as long as uh, the one with Jacob and Esau. But, well, it is long, but I won't go the long route. It's the story of Joseph. And you all know the story of Joseph. He was a favorite of his father. And he was the youngest. And uh, his father had made a, a, a robe of many colors for him. And his brothers were jealous and angry with him especially when Joseph had a dream that his brothers were going to bow down to him. I mean, they already had things against Joseph, and this just put icing on the cake. <laughs> What's wrong, little brother? Who do you think you are? But this is what the Lord had given him. It's not Joseph was lifting himself, but he had a dream from the Lord that the Lord was going to do this. It was going to come to happen. So what his brothers did, of course, when Joseph was sent out by his father to, to his brothers to take him food and so forth, 
the brothers saw him coming and they were angered and they ended up throwing him in a pit. And uh, they wanted to kill him, but thanks to their brother Reuben, they didn't. And it said they sold him to s slavery in Egypt. And um, they took his uh, robe, they killed a goat and put blood and told their father that a wild animal had killed Joseph. His father was heartbroken. And his youngest son that he loved so much. But anyway, uh, Joseph was taken to Egypt. And in Egypt, he ended up getting a pretty, pretty good position until there was lies. He was uh, falsely charged and was thrown in prison. And then while he was thrown in prison, you know the story. There was the baker and the butler and they, they had, who were also in prison. And uh, they had dreams and uh, Joseph interpreted it. And what was good news for one and not good news for the other. And uh, one was going to live, the other one was not going to live. But that was the dreams. And uh, so um, Joseph told the uh, butler and the baker, remember me before Pharaoh. Because uh, of the, the dreams that he had had that he could interpret them. And it wasn't until two years later that Pharaoh had a dream. And nobody in the land could interpret those. And then the butler remembered Joseph. And he told the Pharaoh about that. And uh, so Joseph was brought out, and the dream that the um, Pharaoh had were about the seven fat cows and seven lean cows. And uh, it was um, a prophecy about seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And uh, because of Joseph's dream and his suggestion, uh, they were able to, during the good years, save up, store up enough food you know, everywhere around Egypt. And Joseph was put in charge of that. He was only a second in command to Pharaoh himself, to the crown, to the throne. That was a high position from G being thrown in prison to being lifted up to that position. He was in charge of all the food and everything. So people would go to um, Egypt during the famine, which finally came, to get food. They had to go through Joseph. And eventually his brothers went there, they were sent by uh, their father, Isaac. And uh, they didn't recognize him. The brothers did not recognize Joseph. And the word tells us uh, in Genesis 40, chapter 45. Beginning with verse 1. And Joseph could not, this is after Joseph had sent him back with food and he put more bags and some money on there and they thought that uh, someone had taken it or that was a mistake. And in any case, Joseph had done that on purpose. So in chapter 45, verse 1, then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him and he cried out, make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard it. Can you imagine Joseph's cries? These, these were good cries. And his brothers were there after all these years. Verse 3, then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. Why were they dismayed? Because they thought they had gotten rid of him. And they felt guilty of what they had done. And they were afraid, oh, what's going to happen with us? Verse 4, and Joseph said to his brothers, please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not, therefore, be grieved or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine have been in the land. And there are still five years in which there will be either plowing or harvesting. In any case, he was revealed to the brothers. And uh, eventually, we know the story that uh, Joseph's father and the, the younger brother, Benjamin, they all went to Egypt to live during the famine or during later years also. And all their families, everything were brought to Egypt. And um, their brothers were afraid because Isaac was old and he was going to get ready to die. That once he died, that Joseph would take revenge on all the brothers because of what they had done. In Genesis chapter 50. If 
Yeah, sorry for jumping around, but it's kind of like a short chronolo chronology of the story. Begins with verse 15 of Genesis 50. When Joseph's brother saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us. He may actually repay us for all the evil which he did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, before your father died, he commanded saying, they wanted to cover their, their tracks. This is what our father said. Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespasses of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. How could they even think that I would do something against them? He was hurt. He, he, was sad. he, he wept because of his love for his brothers. Verse 18, then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we are your servants. And Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for I am, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring, a, bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you your little ones, and he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So that was not only forgiveness, but reconciliation. There was a coming together. You know, reconciliation means a restoration of friendly relations. He re, he, there was forgiveness that he gave them. He restored them. They reconciled. And you know, God has reconciled us to himself. And when we were in sin, God forgave us. But he not only forgave us our sins, he reconciled us to himself. You know, the, the work wasn't done. And uh, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we, we received the forgiveness and reconciliation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and uh, I'll be closing here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Begins with verse 18. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. You know, in other words, he was not, uh, imputing means he was not committing the sins upon them, their trespasses. Verse 20, now, then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Be reconciled. In the last scripture is in Romans chapter 5. Uh, verses 6 through 11. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
through whom we have now received the reconciliation, the healing, the forgiveness, the reconciliation of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we don't need to hold back and wait about maybe we need to forgive somebody, you know, and uh, we don't know what uh, God has for us, but uh, forgiveness and reconciliation goes go together. That's what God wants in our lives, and uh, the Lord is so good. Let the word say, even when we were his enemies, he reconciled us to himself. What a love and blessing the Lord is in our lives. Amen. Praise God. Brother Louis, would you close? Call Brother Nathan and those that lead us in worship. And um, I say amen to uh, Brother Daniel's message. Forgiveness is very important, even as he started in the Gospel of Matthew, that Jesus says uh, we need to forgive one another. If we don't forgive, neither will he forgive us. So that's a, a foundation that God has put, you know. And uh, Daniel close was Romans chapter 5. Now, I'd like to read uh, some of these verses he, he read already. He says, uh, verse 8, But God demonstrated, demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, much more th than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the rest through him. For if when we were enemies, we were uh, reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved by his life? And not only that, that but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received the reconciliation. And uh, I can't remember who put it like like. When God reconciled us, it, this gentleman was saying that when Jesus was hanging in the cross of Calvary, he was extending his hand to, the, to God his Father, and with the other one, he, he stretched a hand to save the sinner, and he brought them both together. So God received the sinner because of the blood of Jesus Christ, reconciled us back to himself. And uh, because uh, the Bible says, that sin separates us from God. And the only one that can forgive that sin is Jesus Christ. That's why he went to the cross. So he's extending, Father, please forgive my son. Please forgive my daughter. That's why I died for them. And then he, he, God held our hands. So God still speaks today. The word of God is still has power for us today to forgive. To ask for forgiveness because we falter. And sometimes, like Brother Daniel says uh, in his message, sometimes we find it difficult because we perhaps offended someone or someone offended us and we let it go. But God can, we can always come to God to forgive us. And also, when we have reconciliation, we can also go to that person and ask for forgiveness. And like Brother Daniel says, unfortunately, I know uh, my wife's side of the family, she, we come from a large family to her, and, and we saw that sin, that because of unforgiveness, many families separate. But that's where we need Christ in our lives. When Christ is in our lives, we can easily forgive one another. Even in church, sometimes, uh, you know, we, we're, we live in this flesh, and sometimes, we might not give the right answer, and uh, sometimes that hurts. But that's when we need to forgive one another. And uh, unfortunately, many people, sometimes they stay home because they don't want to see that person. But you know what? If we love Christ, Christ loves the church. And if we're in Christ, it should, not, it should be easy, but it is possible that we can forgive one another through what Christ did for us. So tonight, if there's something that you want to bring to the Lord, 
we're going to open the altar, and as they lead us in worship, there's elders here that we can uh, pray for one another. And uh, I thank God for the message that Brother Daniel read tonight. It's a timely message because we've got to be reminded. We need to always seek in God to forgive us, and if God has forgiven us, we also can forgive one another. And so as they lead us in worship, the altar is open, and we can pray. You can bring your heart, whatever it might be in your heart. Not even for forgiveness, you might want to pray for someone at home. I know last night we prayed for Gabriel. We can pray for Gabriel tonight. We can, uh, you can bring those things to the altar. And also, uh, God will hear our prayers because the Bible says whenever we gather, Jesus Christ is in our midst. So the altar is open. Praise the Lord.
Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, just for your word, your instruction in our lives, Father, Lord, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, and Lord, we just thank you this evening, Lord, just this bread we received, help us, Lord, just to, to meditate on it, to carry it with us, Father, to, Lord, put it into action in our lives, and Lord, we just give you thanks and praise for the chance, the ability to be here this evening, Lord, and we just give you thanks and praise in your awesome and holy name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. Thank you for being with us.